Hello everyone and welcome back to my stock career in Kerbal Space Program 1.8. This episode, as the previous ones in this series, were recorded during live streams on Twitch. And typically I have been downloading the Twitch recording of the live streams and unfortunately I seem to have missed one. So there is one live stream that I just don't have anymore and they delete the videos off of Twitch. So what probably happened during that live stream is that I designed and launched an SSTO and I would have loved to have brought that to you because of course uh, it's something I enjoy doing quite a lot. It was only a small SSTO using the Mark II parts. It only launches small probes and what we did was we launched a probe to fill a docking around the moon contract. You know the explore the moon contract that asks you to dock two objects around it and so we just sent up a probe that would dock to our station that's already around the moon and that could be made small enough to fit inside the SSTO. We'll see the SSTO in future uh, missions, in future episodes. It's called the Spirit of Jin, and we use it for quite a lot of things, actually. Uh, anyway, so with that sad news that I was unable to download that one stream, we will continue as we have been uh, listening into the original audio for the live stream. So we had a successful space plane and it put this into orbit and now this has to dock with our moon station. If I had mech jab I could just throttle up and it would use the RCS but that doesn't happen in stock does it? Nope. So I have to hold down the H key. So I actually... I don't know if I would get it or not but I actually saw some of this uh... Jedi Fallen Order thing, and it seemed fun. I haven't been able to see Mandalorian, I don't have the Disney Plus thing. But, um, yeah, the game looks like a smooth, enjoyable experience. I mean, it's not like a super intense sort of thing, like uh, some of the older Star Wars games. But, still. The station needed it? Oh, we'll see. But because we were launching this with uh, barely able to launch anything to orbit space plane, you know. I had thought about doing American Truck Sim on Thursday, but... Raider Nick talked me out of it. <laughs> Solo's great. I liked Solo a lot. Solo's a good time. No problematic scenes in that one. Rogue One was bad for you? Why that? Why is that? I might have to reassess my... My suggestion if Rogue One was bad for you. I don't know why we think we needed more power on here. Maybe for the... For the sci science lab, I guess. But we'll probably ha have a big solar array thing for that. You didn't think it was a good story, Rogue One? Hello, Edwin. I thought it was a good story. I think they should have spent a little bit longer on the main character's motivations, but... Like, make her a little bit more reluctant to join in, like they showed in the in the ads for it ahead of time, but... Yeah, yeah, we we can't use the lab right now, that's true. So, um, yeah, we'll probably have to have big solar arrays or something. But, no, if you if you didn't like Rogue One and you think they're just making movies to make money and you don't want them making movies to make money, then I don't think their, their movies are gonna work for you. Might as well skip the lot. <laughs> mm, it's rotated a little bit. Uh, now this stock, it should like magnetize a lot, shouldn't it? But no, I don't think that's good. Let's have the station rotate that a bit. Well, I don't think it was bad. And I don't, yeah, I, I didn't think Rogue One was bad at all. It was very daring, especially to end the way it did. I don't really understand why... Why was it bad? I don't know. 
It's tough for me to recommend a movie if I don't know why you think something is bad. Okay, that was quick. All right, and we filled that contract. Yeah. Okay, so this did that thing. I guess we could add solar panels to this. I mean, we've got a docking port there. We could put a full solar array on. Boop. Well, that was not much of a boop. That was more like a slam together kind of thing. <laughs> All right. Um, we could try the space plane again. You always say boop when you dock? There are boopy docks and there are non-boopy docks. Sir Wales, that is not safe for a stream. <laughs> we do not want to imagine what... no. Um, they need a little bit more for these solar panels, so we'll wait. Yeah, we'll wait on the main solar arrays for that until we can unlock these solar panels. Okay, so what else do we have to do? I swear we already had like a mission on its way for this new orbital station around Ike. Maybe not? We've got a lot of people to rescue around Duna and the orbital station around Duna. Yeah, yeah, first we need power on the for the lab, then we can stick a scientist in there, then we need to deliver some science to it. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, one of these Ike bases should do it. I just... I, I feel like we already sent an Ike base, but I guess not? Okay, well, we're approaching the transfer point to Duna, so we'll just... Why do I feel like I've done this already? I mean, aside from the fact that everything's already labeled Ike Base. Ganymede was fun. Yeah, landing on Ganymede was something. A probe, for those who didn't watch it. It's not a, not a Kerbal. <laughs> that would be quite a lot. Ike Base? I mean, <laughs> seems seems like it should work. That's what it's called. Seems to have all the things as usual. Does anybody remember if there's anything wrong with this? SAS? I think we must have a controller on it. I mean, the other right bases weren't delivered with a Kerbal. I think the, uh, the unit is underneath the docking port. Ugly fins? How dare you? Well, uh, I'll just launch. We, uh, we could wait to daylight, but whatever. Music. Okay, music is not gonna get on with it. Alright, fine. Reaction wheel? Uh... We'll be fine. <laughs> I mean, it'll be a tiny, tiny reaction wheel, but I'm sort of used to that, right? Right? Maybe? We didn't land sideways on the moon in Mimis, did we? Okay, fairings. I mean, the electric charge is a little bit anemic. Don't expect this burn to take a whole whole lot of time. How long is it going to take to turn though? No, it's pretty nimble. Look at that. Does the cupola? The cupola has a reaction wheel too, doesn't it? Or does it not? I forget. It has a reaction wheel. It's probably pretty powerful from the feel of it. I vaguely recall it having five units. This doesn't have thruster ports, no. I mean, it doesn't need to dock. The only time you really need thruster ports when you have the reaction wheels is if you need to dock. 
Well, we definitely want to go the same way around as Ike. We're not really gonna dip into the atmosphere for this. It'll have to capture on its own. I'll pretty much do it right there. Okay. Alright, so let's see what other Duna-related missions we need to take care of. We need to rescue Mildorf from orbit of Duna. Save Mildorf Kerman. Science data from surface of Ike. Huh. Don't we have a probe there somewhere? Oh, this, these are new ones. Sorry. Filney from Orbit of Duna. I knew we had the Orbit of Duna one, but I didn't know. I guess we might as well pick up Mildorf as well, huh? We need a... This, this is too complicated for us just yet. 6,000 units of liquid fuel. I mean, I guess we could. We have money, but... Uh, 16 Kerbals. We'll eventually need to put three pilots on. Let's rescue some people first. We need to recover Ludred's... Ludred and Ludred's scrap from orbit of Duna. Well... We can... We can rescue Ludred along with uh, Mildorf and Filney with a three-person capsule, but we need... We need a claw to grab that scrap. A claw and a big heat shield would do the trick, I think. New orbital station around Ike. Oh, that was just supposed to be an orbital station. We're, we've got it as a lander. <laughs> but it doesn't matter. Um, anyway. Um, yeah. So, let me just take a look at what the scrap... Well, I guess we can't really see the scrap. But it said the dimensions. It's a pretty small piece of scrap. It's probably just a pod. Where's the Ludred? Let me just see his orbit. Or her orbit. Eh, it's a normal low orbit. Really low orbit. They always throw them in low orbits. Alright. So... We'll get the claw bit first. Okay, we're gonna need RCS fuel. We already know that we're gonna need to dock with something. Center mass is right down here. We probably don't need all that up later. But uh, still, the center mass is down here. Even if we get rid of the fuel here, still down here. Interesting. Um, we probably don't need a huge amount of monopropellant. It's just for docking. The way it extends is really irritating right now. <laughs> I mean, we almost need to have a, like, a robotic part to deal with that. To extend it out away from this. Because... If I sort of try and tuck it in here, I guess we'll have to flip it around and have it extend below. This will basically be on internal power on the way down. We don't really need this fuel tank adapter or the engines here. Hmm. 45 mod propellants. Okay, here we go. And does that make sense? Yeah. All right. Launch. Almost got to orbit. <laughs> such such dramatics. Such drama. Okay, hold on. Hold your horse. Hey, come back here. Come back here. Solar orbit? No, in Duna orbit. But we'll probably get him first. Or her. Okay, we obviously have to be going in the same direction as Luddard Scrap, and let's not assume that that's just prograde here. Okay, but it is. Yeah, close enough. All right. So, that is a node for this in 98 days. So, now the rescue vessel for three Kerbals. So, we need 4,000 to get to orbit. Let's say 1,200 to get there. That's 5,200. Let's give it uh, 700 to make orbit around Duna. 
6,000, maybe 500 to rendezvous, 6,500, 800 to come back, 7,300. Don't have that much. <laughs> hmm. That's overestimating everything, though. Okay, does anybody see anything wrong with this? We have to send it up without any Kerbals. So that we can rescue three. We're sending it to Duna. And... let's go. These fancy definitions that... They'll eventually turn us all into liquids. Oh god, I've, I've been looking at chat and not paying attention to my apoapsis. See what you guys did. There's either something wrong with our Delta V reading or uh, I've grossly mistaken this. I thought we saw more in the VAB before we started. Okay, let's find out. It was lying just now. I don't know why it was lying to me, but... Something about the engine plate and Delta V readings. They screw up auto struts? What's wrong with these things? They don't look good. They screw things up. I'm just gonna go back to using the couplers and fairings. Oh, they force auto strutting. Hmm. So, which one of these Kerbals is most likely to be a, a pilot? Ludred, Mildorf, or Filney? Hmm. Bonus Ike encounter for no reason. Well, they're all basically in the same orbit, so it really doesn't matter. It'll be just whoever's most convenient at the time. <laughs> all right. Uh, so that'll be our correction. Right, we've got three missions over there. Let's see. Oral station we sent. We sent this one. Sent this, this is the same one. This oral station will wait for the next time. And we're sending this one. That Sentinel telescope is already out there, right? I, I didn't, like, dream that. That we, we, we did send that, right? <laughs> hmm... Sentinel. Alright. Well, I haven't gotten any news from it finding anything yet, though. It is in the right orbit, but it still shows that orbit. Presumably because it hasn't gotten the 15 asteroids, but let me just check. Let me just check that everything's copacetic with it. It's a very lucrative contract, after all. Yeah, it says reach the designated orbit. In the spacecraft? No, it's supposed to do it passively. See, it says mapping process will happen passively over a length of time as long as any active sentinels are near their specified orbit. We're supposed to receive communications. Alright, uh, so yeah, we just keep track of everything and then... Um, Whichever happens first, happens first. The Dres probe is doomed. I guess we should send another one, but I'm not in any hurry to investigate Dres. So it looks like Pod Grabber 1 is the first one to get the mid course adjustment. Okay, so this has done its thing. We'll have to wait until... Well, I should check whether it's really okay, okay, but I'm pretty sure it's okay. Let me focus on Duna... Oh, what does... Camera on Duna. Whatever, I'll trust that it's okay and we'll fix it when we get there. This one does not need to be done super precisely anyway. Alright, that, that we can fill around with once we get there. No, I'm, I'm definitely not in with YouTuber culture. I don't understand most of it. I am in California. So? So are nearly 40 million people and doesn't make them all YouTubers. Yeah, I haven't posted a vlog yet. There you go. 
That's true. Total Space Program has the nicest save structure. I mean, none of the save structures I've seen from the tutorials are anything like Kerbal Space Program's save structure. <laughs> it's it's so clear. Uh, thanks for following Just One Life. I've had to see many discussions of serialization and some things that just skip over that. And Right. I, I feel like the human readable aspect of it is very important to me. Um, like with Kerbal Space Program. It might end up just being by- I mean, because I can't- I don't have a tutorial that t tells me how to construct the XML or JSON right now. And I don't have much experience with those, so... I'll probably just go with the binary since, um... I have it explained to me, basically. Even though it looks like it's gonna take them 10 hours to get to the point. Um... Yeah, it will be easiest, that's for sure. Well, let's just go with that for now. Um, we've got Rescue there and Ike Base there. I think that's... We should probably take a look at that Rescue. I mean, since this is in orbit, let's just make sure it's recharging. And then we'll take a look at that Rescue mission to make sure I don't need to do anything with it just yet. But since this is in orbit already, we don't have to worry about it too much. Might as well get them all in orbit first. Like over there. Briefly grazing its SOI or something. Let's get the claw on that first. And then we'll worry about getting the Kerbal out. Uh, you know, Rescue 3D could probably get to that pod first. Let me just switch to it. Okay, that's a good rendezvous. I think it'll still take time for that pod grabber to come around, let's see. We're really tight though, that periapsis is really close to the atmosphere. Centered from active craft to target? What do you mean? We're gonna have it park first, because we want the claw over here. Well, the PE has to be where the PE is, because uh, that's where they are. Not much. That's good. I mean, in principle, Dilo Root, but it's. I haven't had to work with them, right? I mean, it's like you learn about them, but since you didn't really manipulate things, you didn't write scripts to do with them, um, it's like a vague, hazy sort of understanding. I mean, I've seen pictures, stack heap, and people have tried to explain it and everything, but really, until you put things to use, there's no real understanding. So we have to grab onto whatever this is in a way that will allow the heat shield to protect it. Well, it's one of these lander cans. Let's see if... Uh, it doesn't have electric charge, so... Ludred can't help. Ludred was completely useless. Um, so... We'll have to be careful not to block the hatch. Okay, hold on a sec. I'm docking. I can't follow anything right now. When I say docking, clawing, whatever. Okay. Well, it looks like it's within the confines of the heat shield. Alright, so what we want to do is have Ludred 
move to the capsule, which is currently a long ways away. So let's switch vessel. Bring that in. Earth, what are you talking about in Earth orbit for transfer? We'd have to make orbit around Earth then. But the, the, what, what you're missing maybe is that there are two other Kerbals we have to rescue with this. Not just him. Heck, if it was just him, we probably would just have him ride down with the claw anyway. <laughs> A little bit risky, but, uh, you know. If um, if it failed, if if it failed with the pod and the claw, and fail anyway, the contract. Oh, I didn't check whether he was a pilot or not. Okay, that's good enough. All right, uh, it's a scientist. Ludred's a scientist. At least they get EVA training. Okay, well, we have to go and get the other two. Uh, it looks like Mildorf probably the next one. We can just boost up and let Mildorf catch up to us, not bumping into other pod. Well, if you're gonna rescue a Kerbal around Duna, you might as well get three. <laughs> They're all basically in the same orbit, too. <laughs> yeah, it only has... Well, it has also the these solar panels here. It only has one because I was basically counterbalancing the antenna. Oh, I wanted one of those. Solar panels are expensive. Even realism overall, solar panels are expensive, so... You don't need to. Uh, some cars have engines. <laughs> I, I can't, uh, I'm not an authority on car engines. Anyway, um, we've got an engineer here though, Mildorf. The engine is definitely removable from the car, yes. Well, I mean, it's sort of an existential question, isn't it? Not much of a car without an engine, but... Can we call it a car when it has no engine? Not sure. After all, car is just what we call an automobile. And automobile requires it to be mobile. Okay, and now number three. Please let it be a pilot, for heaven's sakes, fill me. Fill me pod. What do you mean longest run? Do you mean like in one sitting or I don't know what you mean. I don't remember. I don't think I've ever measured. I've started career mode so often. It used to be I'd start every um, every new version. We're talking about uh, basically writing a game. Yeah. So, when we're talking about player, we really mean a player. <laughs> we mean the little character that walks around in an RPG, basically. And we're not, we're not talking in abstract. I've got it uh, sitting around in the background here. So, um, here, there's Unity with this very simple structure of a game with a simple character. Really big map. I've got an 8 kilometer by 8 kilometer map because it's Mars. Uh, here, let me zoom out. It's actually uh, a real segment of Mars. This area here. And then uh, we've got 64 terrain tiles, each 1 kilometer square apiece. And then there's the little character. Anyway, it's just my first attempt at these things, so... 
probably nothing too great is going to come out of it. Though these days it's much easier than it used to be, obviously, with all these tools available. Oh yeah, well, I mean, it's like Kerbal as far as getting things wrong before you get it right. So, I have... I have experience with a high tolerance of explosions, you know. Pilot! Tony is, in fact, a pilot. We got a full crew. We got a pilot, engineer, and a scientist. Okay, we need to wait until... Herman gets all the way back there. No, we just needed the one pod for, um, Ludred. Never leaves you. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's sort of like that. Yep. That's one positive reason to learn all this stuff. Um, well, first of all, we're going to want to go to the tracking station, because time warping here with the low orbit is not, not going to be any fun. But I think after three and a half hours, I should probably stretch just for my own sake. We have contract, you know, we have the Dres contract. And I guess maybe we could launch one to Dres, but the communication situation is still a problem, and that was the problem in the first place. Other than that, it's all about Duna, really. So, okay. We'll just focus on... Oh, whatever happened to the orbital station? Did I... Well, no, it's still... Okay, wait. Shh. Okay, hold on. Let, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll let you watch this orbital station that I almost forgot about. So, yes, we need to deal with this, which I will do when I get back. See, I definitely need a stretch if I'm gonna forget my missions half the time. Alright. Be back in a bit.